right, the Secretary General will make some opening remarks and then we'll take questions. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, we are witnessing a wave of demonstrations around the world, from the Middle East to Latin America and the Caribbean, from Europe to Africa and Asia. This quiet in people's lives is leading to anything but quiet in streets and city squares. Every situation is unique. Some protests are triggered by economic issues, including rising prices, persistent inequality, or financial systems that benefit elites. Others stem from political demands. And in some cases, people are reacting to corruption or different forms of discrimination. Yet, there are commonalities that span the continents and that should force all of us to reflect and respond. We need to think about the underlying factors. It is clear that there is a growing deficit of trust between people and political establishments and rising threats to the social contract. And the world is also wrestling with the negative impacts of globalization and new technologies which have increased inequalities within societies. Even where people are not protesting, they are hurting and want to be heard. People want a level playing field, including social, economic and financial systems that work for all. And they want their human rights respected and a say in the decisions that affect their lives. As I already said in my statement two weeks ago, I am deeply concerned that some protests have led to violence and loss of life. Governments have an obligation to uphold the freedoms of expression and peaceful assembly and to safeguard civic space. Security forces must act with maximum restraint in conformity with international law. And I call on protesters to follow the examples of Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. and other champions of nonviolent change. There can be no excuse for violence from any quarter. Above all, I urge leaders everywhere to listen to the real problems of real people. Our world needs action and ambition to build a fair globalization, strengthen social cohesion, and tackle the climate crisis. And those are precisely the objectives of the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. With solidarity and smart policies, leaders can show they get it and point the way to a more just world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, we see how the situation in Lebanon has escalated and uh, your special representative in Beirut is meeting the leaders in the country. What is your main message to uh, the President of Lebanon and the government? Thank you. My message uh, is uh, very simple and is always the same. And I would say that uh, our mission there has been also quite active in dialogue with all parties. It's a message that uh, the country must solve its problems with dialogue. And I urge massive restraint and no use of violence, both from the side of the government and the side of the protesters. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. You met with the foreign minister of Bolivia this morning. Does the United Nations support the Organization of American States and the European Union in calling for a runoff election for president? The uh, OEA and uh, the government have confirmed to us that uh, uh, there will be a, an audit done by the Organization of American States. Um, uh, we fully support that audit, and we are at the disposal of the Organization of American States uh, if they will need any kind of expertise that uh, we can provide. I appeal at the same time to both government and opposition to keep the maximum restraint, and I hope that uh, this initiative uh, will, hope, will help, hopefully uh, lead to uh, a positive conclusion.
Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Betul Yuruk with the Turkish News Agency. Anadolu, uh, we have seen so many developments and discussions about the northeast of Syria over the past two weeks, and I was wondering what you have to say about the discussions, let it uh, be a safe zone or internationally controlled security zone, about the uh, future of the foreign ISIS fighters. Uh, what do you have to say about these developments? Well, we've been accompanying very closely everything that has happened uh, in contact with all the parties. Our main objectives were very simple. No escalation in conflict, and I'm happy that uh, we have no information of any conflict taking part at the present moment in northeastern uh, Syria. No escalation in conflict. This escalation, as it has happened, uh, full respect for international human law, uh, human rights and uh, uh, international humanitarian law, and uh, effective protection of civilians, and hopefully the end of confrontation will allow it now uh, to be seen uh, positively. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, uh, it is clear to me that what has happened in northern Syria shows that it's time to start seriously discussing the end game. And if that is the case, the political process became more important than ever, and uh, our total commitment now is to make sure that the Constitutional Committee will start its work in Geneva as a first step for a political solution that hopefully will lead uh, to uh, the end of this tragic chapter in the life of the Syrian people. Foreign ISIS fighters, Mr. Secretary General. In relation to that, the, inf the last information we have is that indeed there was a limited number of fighters that managed to flee. And uh, we, of course, uh, ask all the parties involved to make sure that everything is done for that not to happen more. And uh, uh, we believe the international community needs to find uh, a solution uh, for uh, those uh, that have committed uh, crimes to be effectively uh, uh, made accountable. And we know that this is not an easy question. There are several discussions taking place. We will do everything possible to help create the conditions for that accountability to become a reality. Hello. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, do you see any role for the Security Council to play vis-a-vis uh, -vis these demonstrations uh, which turned bloody, for example, in Iraq? Today alone, five people killed in the south, three in Nasiriya, two in Baghdad. The total more than 160 Iraqis lost their lives and it's due to external intervention in Iraq interference and through militias, uh, pro-Iran militias actions inside Iraq. Do you see a role because it's no longer an internal affairs between Iraqis or their government? Uh, our mission has been very active uh, in relation to this. Uh, we have issued a report uh, just three days ago with some preliminary findings and uh, we have of course been systematically appealing for non-violence and for restraint in uh, relation to the uh, authorities and the, the other actors uh, uh, that are involved. Uh, uh, we deeply regret the number, of, the large number of uh, people that have been killed in these circumstances. And according to our preliminary findings, there were indeed uh, substantial violations of human rights that took place and need to be clearly denounced and condemned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.